This is a rare display of force, one normally seen only in third world totalitarian countries. 25,000 National Guard troops in the nation's capital on a massive security mission, protecting Joe Biden and those attending his swearing in ceremony. Yet this was not a first for an American inaugural. In 1861, the U.S. Cavalry stationed sharpshooters on rooftops and troops along the inaugural route to protect then unpopular president-elect Abraham Lincoln as his carriage traveled down Pennsylvania Avenue to the Capitol. Five weeks later, the first shots of the Civil War rang out over Fort Sumter. 160 years later, some people believe a divided America is on the precipice of a second Civil War. But the senior editor of the American Conservative Author Rod Dreyer believes the country may be on the brink of what he calls a Father Kolakovich moment. In his book, Live Not By Lies, Dreyer tells of an anti-Nazi priest who taught at Slovakia's Catholic University during the Second World War. Father Stefan Kolakovich warned his students about coming persecution. He told his students, the good news is the Germans are going to lose this war. The bad news is the communists are going to be ruling this country when the war is over. The first thing they're going to do is come after the church. We have got to be ready for it. Kulakovich organized student prayer groups to prepare for suffering. Dreyer says they became the backbone of Eastern Europe's underground church. I firmly believe that we are in a similar moment here in America now. Christians of all kinds, Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, have got to take advantage of this moment of liberty we have to get our networks in place to prepare for persecution. And unlike Soviet and Eastern Bloc communism, Dreyer describes what may be coming to America as soft totalitarianism. It's not going to have gulags, secret police, the things that the Soviets had. Rather, this is something that's going to be done uh, by mostly by big tech limiting access to the economy and keeping it so that only those who conform with what the regime wants can participate in the economy. Social media speech censorship and Amazon's recent shutdown of servers for the popular conservative website Parler may provide a clue as to what may lie ahead. And Dreyer believes this form of persecution will come from big tech, who will use their freedom in our market, our free market society, to marginalize political and religious conservatives, Gordon. Well, Gary, we've never experienced anything like this in America. Give us an idea of what this um, big tech marginalization would look like. Well, we're already seeing some of that. Of course, the, the best example would be the, the recent shutdown of Parler. Uh, that was a popular conservative uh, social media platform. About 10 million people were on board with that. It was growing uh, rapidly. And then, of course, Amazon Web Services shut it down. Uh, we're, we've seen censorship and restrictions on Christian and conservative thought uh, on social media. Also, uh, President Trump and Mark Lindell, the Christian uh, CEO of MyPillow, uh, of course, banned from Twitter for life. And then, of course, it's moving into corporate America. We're seeing uh, uh, the head of Goya Foods, the CEO of Goya Foods, uh, Robert Inanawe, uh, he was also censored by his uh, leadership there. And so it's also possibly, Gordon, going to move into the workplace. I talked to Todd Nettleton, and he said he's with the Voice of the Martyrs. He said he expects that eventually uh, we could see Christians in the workplace uh, being denied promotions, maybe even being denied jobs, uh, simply because of their views, opposing things like uh, uh, transsexual uh, people in the workplace and rights for uh, uh, abortion rights and so forth. So that could be the beginning and we need to prepare. Okay, so tell us how to prepare. Uh, what can Christians do to prepare for this? Gordon, I would say stay focused. First and foremost, stay focused on Jesus. Uh, stay focused on what he wants from us as believers, what he has taught us on how to conduct ourselves, being civil, uh, at work, at home, wherever we may go in the public uh, place. Uh, also treat others with love and respect and show forgiveness to others and grace to others that he has shown to us. I think that's the beginning. Uh, that's the starting point. Now beyond that, uh, perhaps Bible groups, prayer groups. You know, we've seen a little bit of uh, uh, restrictions here because of church shutdowns during the pandemic. 
uh, what would happen if we go online? And uh, I have a life group that has been online. It was only online early on in the pandemic. Now we also meet in person. Well, what if you go online and have your life groups, your study, Bible study and prayer groups online, and then all of a sudden they're shut down? Uh, in another pandemic, maybe those, somebody would pull the plug on, on your server like they did with Parler and you wouldn't be able to communicate that way. The churches would be shut down. You wouldn't be able to communicate that way. But you can still go into homes and have home uh, Bible study, very much like the early church, Gordon, like the book of Acts. Uh, maybe we'll be going back to that. Well, you've certainly traveled to a lot of uh, what in mission circles are called yes. restricted access countries. Uh, where the church is underground and they, they actually learn how to communicate, even how to copy and transmit scriptures. Uh, so the government and, and their neighbors even don't know what they're doing. Do you think that will ever happen uh, in the United States? I don't know if we'll see an underground church immediately, maybe eventually. Uh, but listen, I, you know that I've traveled about two-thirds of the world. You'd mentioned I've met with many underground believers from places like way up in the Himalayas to uh, in Nepal uh, to Africa, the bush there, the desert, also the jungles of Asia. You've been in many of those places. You sent me to many of those places. So did your dad. But one thing I have learned, Gordon, from the persecuted church and those believers that I have met with is be guided by the Holy Spirit. Jesus promised us that we would be persecuted. The world will hate us as it first hurt, hated him. So we can expect it. So what do we do? Let's be guided by the Holy Spirit. I've learned that from them. Uh, for example, uh, those that have been imprisoned and tortured, uh, some have told me they didn't feel the torture because the Holy Spirit guided them and protected them from that, shielded them from that. In addition, uh, when it comes time to uh, be asked if you're going to deny Christ, or required to deny Christ, what gives you that courage to say, no, I'm going to stay faithful to Jesus as they march you down the beach in Libya and get ready to behead you if you don't renounce Christ? Uh, who gives you that strength? Who gives you that courage to say, no, I'm going to stay firm in my faith and I'm going to stay loyal to my Lord Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit that gives you that power. So I would say that's, that's the biggest thing I've learned over the years is be guided by the Holy Spirit and listen to the Holy Spirit and then be obedient. All right, well, we have a viewer question on Instagram. Exactly what will this look like? Will it take the form of not being hired or accepted into certain schools or university? Will there be boycotts against products and services by believers? Or are you talking about more violent forms of persecution and what can we do about it? Well, initially, look, we've already seen discrimination in this country. Churches during the pandemic uh, have been shut down. Now, the U.S. Supreme Court on Thanksgiving Eve uh, came out with a ruling against New York. They were sued by an Orthodox Jewish church uh, and also uh, a Catholic church in New York. Uh, they sued Governor Cuomo for his restrictions there. The Supreme Court said, no, nope, Governor Cuomo, you cannot do this. This is a violation of First Amendment rights. You're showing preference for secularism over the religious institutions. So, uh, no, nope, can't do that. And they ruled five to four. But what happens, Gordon? Uh, it was Amy Coney Barrett who made the difference in that Supreme Court decision. It easily could have gone the other way. What happens when we do sue Christian groups and churches uh, sue, other people of faith sue, and the courts say, no, uh, you're wrong. Uh, and, and I think that day will come where we have judges that will rule against us, so you can't look to the courts. So what do you have to do? You have to get on your knees and look to God, not yeah. government. Well, thanks for your insight, Gary, yeah. and it's always a good word. To, our hope is in Him. That's it's right. not in, in any government, uh, any court system, any politician. We should always be looking to Jesus and we should listen to him. That's the commandment from heaven. We should listen to him because he will guide us. You can get the latest news when you download the CBN News Channel app. You can do it today. There's a, play, there's a listing of all the different places where you can have that app. Uh, download it today so you can stay up to date. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.